Hello from San Antonio, this is Siren Tarot. Welcome back to another Pick a Card reading. How does your person see you? This reading is timeless, and for this reading there are four different options. Option one, Sisters of the Sun Rising. Option two, Immortal Treasures. Option three, the threshold. And quattro, option four, to the celestial mountain. As always, timestamps will be provided. Think of your person of interest and make your selection. If you chose the first card, Sisters of the Sun Rising, here's your reading. So the selection cards are from the Kuan Yin Oracle, Elena Fairchild. Sisters of the Sun Rising. I don't think I've ever used this deck. I've had it for years. I'm not going to read all of this. I'll just read this first paragraph. You are a highly creative being with the potential to help raise the vibration of consciousness on this planet through your creative projects, work, dreams, and hobbies, the power of collaboration, choosing to work with others in joint projects allows for synergy to occur where you can grow stronger and become more than the sum of your individual parts. Calling in great cosmic assistance and potency, you are guided to remain open to other souls joining forces with you, just like the Sisters of the Sun Rising that bring great energy to help humanity through their group endeavors. When you allow for aligned group effort, much that is wonderful can occur. You could have a packed seventh house. That's the house of Libra. Your chart ruler could be in your seventh house. For example, I have Virgo rising. Mercury is my chart ruler, and it's in my seventh house, which is Pisces. You could have a Venus that makes a lot of aspects. Once I have all the cards down, I'll call out a possible astral combo for those who chose the first card. Okay, another Oracle deck. And I don't know when I last used this. This is Jennifer Freed's Astrology Oracle. Sun, moon. Perhaps you have sun conjunct moon in your natal. Moon, Saturn. You could have moon in aspect to Saturn. My Virgo moon squares my Saturn in Gemini. And then we have Venus, Neptune, a very romantic, beautiful aspect. Cosmic Terror. Dos de Bastos, Two of Wands. There's the Oros, Ten of Pentacles, Ocho de Espadas, Eight of Swords, and El Ermitaño. The Hermit. Ten 
Ten of Spades, Ten of Swords, this, this, Spadas. I keep the Jokers, they amplify the cards that they touch. And that Joker is touching two tens. Ten is one, Leo the Sun. Another ten, I can't make this shit up. Deus de Bastos. And King of Spades, King of Swords, Ray de Espadas. Okay, your person sees you as someone who is very multifaceted and serious. And I feel like they could see you as a lifelong partner. They could see you as an ideal spouse. Maybe you're engaged to this person. Maybe you and this person are currently married or in a serious relationship. This is very serious, heavy energy with Saturn and Leo in the mix and Taurus, Saturn, Leo, Taurus. If you chose the first pile, you could have Sun and Moon in Leo, Taurus rising. one possibility. I feel like you have strong fixed energy. So fixed Aquarius, Leo, Scorpio, Taurus. And I'm seeing Leo and Taurus for pile one. Your person sees you as someone who is very classy. Um, you know how to conduct yourself in social situations. You have class. You have emotional intelligence. You have maturity. You could be wise beyond your years. You could be an old soul. I feel like you have a lot of life experience. And your person just sees you as someone who is reliable. When the shit comes down, so-called apocalypse or whatever, when life is just throwing you all kinds of curveballs, when shit is hard you're the person they want to be with they believe in you they trust you um, they look up to you they see you as a leader they have tremendous respect for you um, you have an impeccable work ethic you have character you have integrity you probably have a really strong Saturn in your natal chart. You could have Saturn in the 10th house, Saturn that makes a lot of aspects, um, Saturn and Capricorn. You're not flaky. There's nothing flaky about this energy. You're highly intelligent. They could see you as the most intelligent person they've ever known. But you're not just book smart. You're not just educated. You have common sense. You know how to navigate the wilds of the so-called 3D. You get shit done. Um, your sex appeal is understated. It's not flashy. You don't try too hard. If you're a woman, you probably don't wear a lot of makeup. You probably have this natural beauty and confidence. You can leave the house with no makeup and you're fine. Uh, you probably have really good bone structure, good cheekbones maybe. And you don't look your age. You have this youthful appearance. Um, really good skin. And if you're a woman, I can see you having long legs. Probably slender to average and i'm seeing an a name adam amelia amy amethyst it's not a common name it's a birthstone it's my birthstone february but i've used amethyst for a name before oops what the hell what just happened to the stable oh my god and a story or novel I wrote a million years ago that never turned into anything. I remember naming the protagonist Amethyst. Anyway, um, yeah, 
that is what I see for pile one. Hope that helps. I'm always available for private readings. All the information is included in every box. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out. And if you chose the second card, Immortal Treasures, here's your reading. I don't think I've ever used this Oracle deck. This is the Quan Yin Oracle. I will read the first paragraph. Immortal Treasures. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, hooked on phonics, worked for me. Okay. You carry within you precious immortal treasures, beloved. They exist beyond life and death, belonging to the celestial heavenly realms of the divine presence within you. Kuan Yin now guides you to honor these treasures, the gifts of your soul, which include the ability that you have to transmit healing. Honor yourself as a healer, beloved. Whether formally or informally, your soul brings a special healing light to humanity. You have divine support in your role as a healer in whatever way, usual or highly unusual, that this is unfolding for you now. I feel like if you chose card two, you probably have a packed 12th house, the last house, the darkest house. It's the house before your ascendant, the house of Pisces. You could also have a Neptune that makes a lot of aspects. Perhaps you have strong Pisces in your chart. I'll call it a possible astral combo when I get all the cards. Okay, another oracle that I don't really use. I don't use oracles that much at this channel. Um, Jennifer Freed's Astrology Oracle. I can't recall if I pulled three or four cards for the first pile. It doesn't matter. I'll do three cards. Three of these and four of the tarot and the plain cards. Anyway, um, Chiron, Neptune. Maybe you have the conjunction. I think Chiron is currently in Aries. My Chiron is in Aries in the eighth, the house of Scorpio. Saturn, Pluto, that's a really serious aspect. That's heavy, it's deep. And then Chiron, Pluto, interesting. The Cosmic Tarot. Feel like this is the star seed or light worker pile. Um, you could have a tarot channel, an astrology channel, you could do Reiki. Maybe you watch a lot of NDE videos, maybe you've had an NDE, near death experience. I feel like you are protected by ancestors. I can see your ancestors being close. You may be aware of your spirit guides. Okay. Aste Oros, Ace of Pentacles, Tres de Bastos, Three of Wands, Lady de Oros, Nine of Pentacles, El Loco, The Fool. Queen of Spades, Queen of Swords, Reign of Day, Espadas, Nine of Spades, Nine of Swords, Reign of Day, Espadas. Another Nine of Pentacles. Wow. All these Nines. Nine is Aries. And Four of Diamonds, Four of Pentacles, Quattro de Oros. And Four is Aquarius, and the Fool, of course, is an Aquarius card. So, your person sees you as someone who is highly unusual. 
They've never known anyone like you. I'm seeing Emma Stone in Poor Things. I know there's all this ridiculous controversy around that movie, but it's the best movie that I've seen in probably 20 years. I love it. I would love to see it again on a big screen. I just saw it on my computer at Amazon. I would love to see it on a big screen. Maybe you're not quite as unusual as that character, but you could be neurodivergent. You could just be really quirky. You could have um, an above average IQ. You could be kind of nerdy, but in a sexy way. I mean, this person, it looks like they are into you and they're very aroused. Whatever you got going on, they're all about it. Um, Emma Stone is a Scorpio. I would say the character that she plays in the movie is an Aquarian, or she has strong Aquarius in her chart, but um, your chart is probably complicated because I'm seeing strong water, strong feminine, and also strong masculine. Uh, you could have Sun and Aquarius, Virgo rising, Moon and Scorpio. That's one possibility. Um, I feel like you are visible. You get a lot of attention. You could have a platform. You could have a channel, channels. I feel like a lot of people look up to you. But this person, your person of interest, they see you as someone who is exotic. Perhaps you and this person are from different cultures, you're different ethnicities. Uh, I would say you're not this person's usual type. Again, they've never known anyone like you. Um, they're into your looks. They like the way you look. They're sexually attracted, but beyond that, they just love your energy and your mind. They could be madly in love with your mind. They see you as brilliant. Maybe you've written a book or books. Maybe you're a musician. Um, there's something about you that just sets you apart and this person is mesmerized. This person's fascinated. I'm seeing a T name, Tanya, Tony, short for Antoinette, um, Tamara, um, Tracy, Teresa, Tiffany. Um, you're independent. You go where angels fear to tread. This person sees you as fearless. They feel like you have balls, and that's cool. They like that you have balls. Uh, and I feel like you crack this person up. You have this very dry, dark sense of humor is what I'm getting. And as far as physicality, I don't really focus on looks too much, but you could have really gorgeous long hair, long, gorgeous healthy hair and eyes, eyes that are different. Maybe your eyes are mutable. They change colors. They go from blue to gray to green or they're hazel with gold flecks, something like that. They love your eyes. They love your hair is what I'm getting. And your mouth, you have a very kissable mouth. Yeah, that's what I see for pile two. I hope that helps. I'm always available for private readings. All the information is included in each and every description box. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out. And if you chose card number three, the threshold, here is your reading. This is from the Quan Yin Oracle. This is my first time to use this deck. I won't read the entire thing. I'll read the first paragraph. Okay. 
At the threshold you stand. Before you lies a way of being that is beyond fear. It is a sacred passing through a karmic veil into a new life of empowerment, peace, spiritual service to humanity and joy in your own So, I've got to read this second paragraph. Okay. Congratulations. You are embarking on a phase of deepest soul liberation into freedom of love that triumphs over fear. It has been quite a journey. Many, many lifetimes and much inner work has been required for you to be able to perceive the light of the divine even underneath the density of fear. You are fast approaching the karmic threshold where you can shift from fear-based to love-based embodiment. I had to read that because I chose this for myself and I'm going through some damn kind of thing. I don't know exactly what it is that I'm going through, but it's really dark, but I'm strangely optimistic about this. Um, and I was going to say, if you chose card three, you could, like me, have your son at what is called the anoretic degree. So my son is at 29 Aquarius. You could have your son at the 29th degree of any of the signs. I'll call it a possible astral couple once all the cards are on the table. But I would recommend, if you don't know already, to study up on the anoretic degree in astrology. All kinds of videos on it. Okay, um, I don't usually use oracle decks at this channel, but here's another one. This is Jennifer Freed's Astrology Oracle. Wow, double Jupiter. I cannot relate to that. I don't have the best Jupiter. My Jupiter's in Capricorn in the fifth. I think it's the 26th degree. Should have it memorized by now, but yeah, my Jupiter is 26. Capricorn in the fifth. Sun, Neptune. And Moon, Chiron. I feel like if you chose card three, you've had at least one serious illness in your life. You've transcended, you've healed, but there could have been a serious diagnosis at some point. I'm seeing physical, but it could be physical and mental. A serious diagnosis and you've gone through some really dark times, but you've come out the other side. The Cosmic Tarot. Ray to Copas, King of Cups. La Fuerza, Strength, Leo, Princess of Oros, Princess of Pentacles, and El Sol, the Sun. Two Leo cards. Interesting. And this is all interesting to me because I'm going through something, and uh, Leo is my 12th house, my darkest house, the house of Pisces. The song I'm hearing is Here Comes the Sun, The Beatles, George Harrison. That's one of George Harrison's songs. He wrote it and sang it. George Harrison was a Pisces. Six of clubs, six of wands, seis de bastos, the jack of spades, knight of swords, caballo de espadas. <clears throat> ah, the jack of hearts, knight of cups, caballo de copas. 
That is rare. We have two knights facing each other. It could be nine of diamonds, nine of pentacles, nine of rose. Um, you could have a lot of mutable energy in your natal chart. In all of your life, you felt like you were scattered. And now you're at a place in your life where you're finally maybe feeling integrated. Like everything's coming together. You're stronger than ever before. <clears throat> and you have a purpose. You have a guiding light. You know what you're on this planet to do. Um, things are being revealed to you. So how does your person see you? They see you as someone who is incredibly strong. You've been through it probably more than a few times. You've been through some very harrowing times. You've overcome abuse, trauma, a diagnosis, diagnoses. Maybe you've struggled with mental health. Um, and you are the most spiritual person they know. They feel like you're the great teacher of their life. They have learned a lot from you. Um, and I feel like you and this person do have a deep spiritual connection. You could be soulmates. Possibly twin flames. I don't really get into twin flames too much, but I'm seeing a deep spiritual connection. <clears throat> you and this person probably have mental telepathy. This person probably dreams of you a lot. And if something's going on with you, if you're in distress, if you're in trouble, if you're hurting, this person knows about it. They could reach out to you and you say, how did you know? Well, you know by now because you and this person have probably had a lot of situations like that and it's just business as usual now you know whenever you're in distress whenever you're hurting this person is aware of it and they're going to reach out to you with compassion there's unconditional love here is what i'm getting for pile three this goes beyond casual sex it goes beyond just two people who are having the best sex of their lives with each other this is definitely spiritual you've been through numerous incarnations with this person um, when you met, you both felt that instant recognition, that familiarity that you feel with soulmates. Um, and there is a strong sexual attraction, but this goes far beyond that. It's a lot deeper than that. Um, you are the best person I know. I can hear them saying that, saying that, thinking that, feeling that. You are the best person I've ever known. You and this person could have a conjunction in the 12th house. Maybe Leo is your 12th house. I don't know. A possible astral combo is... Pals, blah, 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 blah. God, I need caffeine. I've slept all day. That's my new thing. I just sleep all day, and then I get up when my son gets home from school. I need to make coffee, black coffee, lots of it. A possible astro combo for those who chose pile three. You could have sun in Leo, Virgo rising, moon in Pisces. That's one possibility of many. I feel like you are psychic. You are intuitive. Um, you could be a light worker, but I don't see high visibility for Pile 3. So if you have a YouTube channel, you may just have a few hundred subscribers. I don't feel like you have tens of thousands of subscribers. I don't feel like um, you're someone who's on camera every day. I don't see you doing live streams. Your energy is probably pretty low right now. You could be conservative with your energy. You could sleep a lot. You could meditate a lot. I feel like you're a really intense introvert. You're probably not all over social media. You may have a few accounts, that's it. And they could be accounts and name only. You don't update on a frequent basis. Um, this person sees you as their other half. They see you as them. 
you're them in another body. So I'm getting kind of twin flame vibes, but twin flames, divine counterparts, soulmates, whatever resonates for you. This is a spiritual connection. Um, and a song that I'm hearing is a favorite love song of mine. How deep is your love? The Bee Gees. An E name, Emma, Emily, Emerald. Emerald could be your birthstone. That's May, isn't it? May, Taurus, and Gemini. Um, Everly, Emerson, Eckhart Tolle. Maybe your Eckhart Tolle. I just, I don't think Eckhart Tolle watches Pick a Card. If he does, he doesn't watch his channel. But that's what I see for Pile 3. I hope that helps. I'm always available for private readings, all the infos in every box. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out. And if you chose Quatro, card number four, to the Celestial Mountain. I don't usually use oracles at this channel. This is from a deck I've never used. I've had it for years, just now using it. The Kuan Yin Oracle. I'll read the first paragraph. Oh, come on now. This is ridiculous. Here we go. To the Celestial Mountain. There are times when divine energy is needed to help us achieve our spiritual goals. When you do not feel completely in control of your destiny, the divine is usually gifting you with an opportunity to reach for assistance and to invoke divine power to call to the celestial mountain so that you might be gifted with a far superior outcome. Your permission to beings that love you unconditionally to offer you help is an expression of spiritual empowerment. You empower those forces to come to your aid and help you manifest your life purpose and destiny. Okay. I feel like if you chose Pile 4, you have strong Capricorn, strong Saturn. I'll call it a possible astral combo when all the cards are down. Um, Capricorn is one of those signs that does not like to ask for help. Capricorn does not like to be perceived as weak, powerless, codependent. Stomach growling. I have slept all day and now it's time to break my fast at 5.21 p.m. San Antonio, Texas. Another Oracle deck. Jennifer Freed's Astrology Oracle. Mars Pluto, that's a formidable blend that can be a really challenging aspect. That's the most challenging aspect in my natal chart. Well, I've got so many, but it's definitely a motherfucker. Um, my Mars at four Capricorn squares, my Pluto at three Libra. Maybe you have Mars square Pluto in your natal chart or some aspect. Uh, Sun, Neptune. And then Moon Chiron. I feel like this person has hurt you. I feel like this person has broken your heart. Cosmic Tarot. And it's easier for you probably to express anger than sadness. Uh, you don't show your tears to the world. You show your anger. I see you having a wounded inner child. I don't usually talk like this. I'm usually pretty, um, I don't know, to the point at this channel, I don't get into the spiritual stuff or the psychological stuff that much. I keep it relatively simple, but um, I can see you 
having a wounded inner child. Maybe when you were a kid, it was not okay for you to express your emotions. You had to keep everything bottled up inside. You couldn't show anger. You couldn't show sadness. You had to always be happy. You had to always be polite. If that is the case, if that resonates, I'm not a psychologist. I'm just shuffling cards in Texas, but uh, I would suggest that you do something to honor your inner child. Get a box of crayons, get some paint supplies, uh, get a guitar, get a drum kit, something. I told my sister this recently, my younger Libra sister. I said, I tell my clients this a lot, okay, if you're struggling. And my clients are mostly women. Who were you when you were five? or 12 years old. Be that girl. Be that five-year-old. Be that 12-year-old. What did you enjoy? What set your soul on fire when you were five, when you were 12? Be that girl. For example, when I was five, I liked to carry around a portable tape recorder, and I would record babysitters. I would have them tell scary stories. I would record myself doing skits. I would sing. When I was 12, my stepdad turned the garage into my bedroom and I had these mirrored closet doors. I would put on a bathing suit and I would dance in front of these mirrored closet doors until I was dripping sweat. I don't dance anymore. My energy is really low, but I like the idea of dancing again and dripping sweat. My stomach is going to be loud on camera. Santa de Espada, Seven of Swords. Those de Oros, Two of Pentacles, Tres de Copas, Three of Cups, Seven de Oros, Five of Pentacles. Okay, the song I'm hearing is You Oughta Know by Alanis Morissette. Alanis Morissette has Sun and Gemini. I think she has a Scorpio moon. Pretty sure. I did this thing recently where I wrote down the natal charts of Alanis Morissette and Jewel. And I wanted to do it. I've not done it yet. I wanted to do a video for my patrons at Patreon saying, okay, here are two Gemini women and yeah, they're both musicians, they're both famous musicians, but these women are very different. And comparing Jagged Little Pill, Alanis's album, to Jewel's Pieces of You. Anyway, um, I feel like this person has cheated on you, this person has betrayed you, and you've expressed your righteous anger. That's what I'm getting for Pile 4. I want... You to know that I'm happy for you. Ten of hearts and a cup says to cup is I wish nothing but the best for you both. An older version of me, is she perverted like me? Would she go down on you in a theater? Queen of diamonds, queen of pentacles, reign of the oros. Yeah, I'm getting strong third-party vibes. This is what I'm seeing. King of Cups, King of Hearts, Rage of Cups. Okay. And of course, it won't resonate with everyone. If it doesn't resonate, you know, you can always pick another pile. But this is what I'm getting for pile four. That this was third-party or is third-party. And this person put you in a specific category. Friend with benefits, situationship, the person on the side. If it is third-party, if this person's married, I don't see them leaving their spouse. I don't see them getting a divorce. I see the two of you having covert communication. Um, this could be on again, off again. There could have been some blocking, unblocking. I feel like you've expressed your anger. This person knows what is up. They know what your expectations are. How do they see you? They see you as someone who is very fiery, um, very sexually exciting. Um, they see you as a friend, okay? I don't see this person being in love with you. I see them being tempted by you. Uh, 
Maybe you met on Instagram, one example of many, and they slid into the DMs and they were just slobbering all over your pictures, your videos. Oh my God, you're so hot. Da, 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 da. They love your physicality. They love the way you look. And if the two of you are having sex, they're enjoying the sex, but I don't see the deeper feelings here. This person can't really offer you anything. Um, they see you as someone who is scary, scary, smart. Um, they know that you have your limits. They can only push you so far. Man, I was not expecting to do a reading like this. I usually keep these readings pretty live. This is my most popular reading. Usually I get more views on how do they see you than anything else. And this is taking a weird, dark turn. Um, suffice to say, they see you as someone who is sexy and dangerous. Uh, you're not idiotic. They know they can't lie to you. Maybe they lied to you before. Maybe they betrayed you somehow before and you quickly called them out. They know that they can't play you. They know that they can't deceive you. Okay, if you chose Pile 4, you could have Sun and Scorpio, Gemini Rising, Moon and Aries. That's just one possibility of many. You and this person, the person you're thinking about, the person on your mind, you probably have at least one significant square in your sinistry, like Mercury, square Mercury, Mars, square Venus, which is really hot for sex. Um... I see you being a lot more emotionally invested in this connection than they are. <clears throat> and again, I realize this is how do they see you. It's not about how do they feel, but I'm just telling you what I see in these cards. I see a lot of trouble. I see a lot of red flags here. And the main thing that's coming out <clears throat> is that they see you as someone who is very sexually exciting. So, yeah. <clears throat> And I am getting an M name, Meredith, Misty, that's my name, Megan, Macy, um, Mallory. Yeah, Mandy, Mindy. Marvel. Maybe you collect Wolverine comics. That's really random. Maybe you have a Wolverine tattoo or a Wolverine t-shirt. They really like the way you look in your Wolverine t-shirt. That's what I see for Pile 4. And that does conclude this Pick a Card reading. Thank you all so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. Sending you all massive love and light from San Antonio.